in the last video i talked about i triples which are lists tuples and strings in python programming i also talked about good and bad variable names if you have not seen that video yet i need you to go and check it out right now before seeing this video because this is a step after that video and in this video i'm going to talk about uh, control structures or condition statements uh, which are if or if else how you can use it and the different types i'm also going to talk about loops such as for loops and while loops the differences between the two and what you can use them for in python programming let's get right into it so first if else and elif as it is in python uh, there are times that you want to change the flow of your program based on some conditions or the other and this is a structure that you can use for that purpose so for example if you want to give out an output based on the input of of the user you can use an if else statement so i'm just gonna open a new window here and let's save this as uh, control structures pi so um i just want to show you a very simple um if else structure suppose we want age of uh the user so we have learned this before how to get our input from outside we would say that um, in this case what is your age and the a the user is going to give us a age and we can say if age is greater than we have seen this before uh, that is a greater than sign there and it's a this a boolean um boolean uh, operation right here so if age is greater than 18 then we're going to print out something so what are we going to print out we're going to say that uh, wow you are older than I expected. Awesome. Okay. So we can also have, I mean, we can leave it like this, but we, we want to also have like in the opposite. So we we'll say that else. So if age is greater than 18, else, that is every other condition apart from age is greater than 18. If you want to be ex uh, explicit, we would also say that age is less than you know, 18. But in this case, I just want to show that we can have this kind of a control structure. We will say that, wow, you are younger than I expected. Fabulous. Okay, so let's see the output of this program. And um, right there, we can do python control structures and it says what is your age i'd say 50. um if you have seen my last video you will know that this is a this is a problem i talked about in the last video so when you get input from the terminal it sees it as an as a string so you can see here type error greater than not supported between instances of string and int. so we have to we have to convert this into integer now if we run it and say 50 yeah so it says as wow you are older than i expected maybe we should put a space here so that we can have a better output and let's run the case of less than 18 so let's say 12 right I say wow you are younger than i expected so this is you know this is very as a very simple case of if else statement in this case we have only two conditions and we just have it like that we can also have the case where you have a flow and you just want that part of your program to run if a condition uh, is met and the rest of the program just keeps running like that then there is one other where we can have like if elif else Elif is like you have uh, multiple conditions and you, you want to treat each condition uh, separately from each other. So let's, um, I'm going to clean this off. And a typical case of that is if we want to give grades based on the score. 
So we're going to say that score equals um, input enter score. Right, so we we're going to say that, um, see, let's um, convert score back here to integer so that we don't have to do it all the time again. All right, so now we have score as integer, so we can say that if score is less than 50, we we'll say that print your grade is D. So now we want another another condition score is greater than or equal to 50. And uh, we've talked about this before and score is less than 60. You can say print your grade is C. So we can do that also. Let's just do that for two more options. Score is greater than or equal to 60. And score is less than 70. You will say print on your grade is B. And we can just say else. Actually, this is not supposed to be elif. <laughs> elif, elif. And we can say else. That is the other options where it is not. Print um, your grade is A. So I need to remind you that uh, there is a accompanying material to every of these tutorials you're just gonna check it in my uh, in my website I, I will link it in the description and you can see all these examples there and read more if you want to so uh, let's run this and see how that goes Python maybe we can just do enter score 50 yeah my score is C right if it's uh, what about if it's 75 and my grade is a so you can see that in this case, we kind of um, treated each condition separately. Actually, if we have another option, let's say I do, how about if I do uh, minus 12? You will see a, an error, I mean, uh, a flaw in this, in this idea now. So my score is not supposed to be D, right? Because there is no negative uh, score. So you might just want to add one more condition if it's less than zero then we can say if less than zero then this is an invalid score or something like that so this is just a way to use uh, if and else and uh, elif and you can use I mean, you can combine this in different ways you can have like nested if so in this case let's say that if it's less than if it's less than zero then we'll say print print invalid score uh, print invalid score then here we can now say else print so here I think we have a problem here so we solve that then we do this so if we have minus 12 like we had before it says invalid score so this is just to show you how you can combine you know if and else if in many many ways yeah so that's it about if else if uh, elif and if uh, and else you can check the website and see more examples I have more examples on the website so next we go to uh, loops so loops are a way for programmers to execute sequences of of expressions multiple times in succession so it usually involves the like, variable that is increasing or is decreasing in succession and this is done in python by the use of for loop or the while loop and there's a fundamental difference between these two and i'm going to show you so i'll create a new say loops pi so 
first is for loop for loop is uh is done in this way we say for a variable say usually we use something like i in um in this case i'm going to introduce what is called range so range is a function in python that gives you a number between uh, one point and the other between uh, maybe a high number and low number so in this case when i say range um 100 then this function gives you from 0 to 99 and so we say that for i in range let's just say print i in this case uh, so that we have everything in our in our terminal we can just say 10 right so print loops so what you can see is that it does like we only write this print once but it does this like 10 times because we have defined in the for loop that for i in range 10 then you have to do this so i mean this is very useful if um if you have to do the same thing over and over in your program so you don't have to write so imagine if i want to print out 0 to 10 and i'll say uh, print 0 print 1 print 2 print 3 so it saves us uh, time in that kind of way suppose we want to like sum a series uh, find a sum of a series so if we say um, uh, find the sum of the series uh, from 0 to 100 in this case we can just i mean do for range in for i in range 1 to 100 first we have to define say sum sum equal to 0 in this case and we would say that sum equal to you're going to see something here we can say uh, so i think we don't we cannot use sum because it's uh, let's use a uh, uh, let's use total in this case total equal to total plus i so at every point here high changes so we can have a um then we can have the total plus the current i so at the end we can print total so let's run that so you can see I mean, if you have to do this all by yourself and do it one after the other, it's going to take you a lot of time. But with the use of for loop, we define the number of times that the expression is going to run then before and. And then we, we run the expression. And when the interpreter gets here, he knows that, okay, this is not 100 yet. Then I go back. Then it goes 2, 3, 4, and 5 until i in this case gets to 100 then it exits the for loop actually we can be explicit and say from 0 from 0 to 100 and we can define like what is the step right so let's go back to the initial one and that says that just print out okay so let's do this it's the same thing as before right so let me reduce this to 10 and just do that as it now now what if we increase this to 2 so in this case the step size that is the each of the iteration each of the each of these steps will be increased by 2 so you can see 0, 2, 4, 6, 8. So you can also have like a decreasing number. So say we start from 10 and we go to 0. In this case, we would want the step size to be minus 2. So we do something like this. And you can see 10, 8, 6, 4, 2. So these are the ways you can use I mean, the for loop. This is the case of number. Suppose I have a list like numbers list uh let's just fill in with random numbers in this case 
right? We can do for, still we can use i, but i in this case takes the place of each number in nums list. So let's print i. So let's see what happens. So you can see it prints out each of this. So suppose we have, a, a, let's say this is x, and we want to have, we want to get the number in the y axis. So we define y as an empty list, and we say that y dot append. I've not, you, uh, I'm not sure I've shown you this before, but what append does here is that it takes a number, it takes uh, an element, and it put this in into this um, y. So in this case, suppose we have an equation, and we say that um, y equals to square of x. So we want to square each element in x and make it what is in y. So we can do this. We can take each element and say that x i uh, y y1 is this y2 is this then we kind of bring it together but in this case since we have a for loop we just do x square and at the end we can print y and oh we already removed nums list this should be i actually so you can see each of the elements in Y becomes the square of the elements in X. So this, this is one good use of, uh, of a for loop that we can, we can basically iterate over the elements in the list. And if it's also like in a string, we could do the same thing uh, for a string. So let's say this is a, a string equal to me ccp sure okay and we can say for s in string print s i mean there could be other things that we can do with s in this case but i want i just wanted to see that we can also iterate over the string which is the which has another i uh, i treble that we talked about the last time and let's do that and you can see it prints out each element in Mississippi. So suppose we have uh, an operation that we want to do on each of the elements in this string, and we can also we can just use this for loop to do that. So I think that is just the basic idea in for loops. And next, which is a while loop, um, it's a little different from for loop. It's also an iteration over uh, some numbers or, for, or over some iterables. But the fundamental difference here is that um, in, in case of four, we know the, um, the number of times we're gonna do the iteration. But in case of while loop, it is not evident how, how many times it's gonna happen. It's basically a condition. So we can say that while, say we have a number, uh, we have a variable, let's say uh, variable equal to 10. So we say that y variable is greater than zero, then we do this, print um, print variable, okay? But you have to be careful with while loop because there's something called a infinite loop that we can have. So if I run this program right now, it will keep running because at each state, variable will be 10. There is no um, way for me to keep the track, to keep track of the uh, value of the variable. And there's no way to uh, actually nullify this, uh, this condition. So it will keep running. So let me just try this and you would see. Oh wait, I didn't save that. Okay. It keeps printing 10. So we have to, do something about the variable because somehow there has to be a point where variable becomes um, less than zero. So, I mean, in this case, we, we can say that variable equals to variable minus one. 
I mean, there are so many cases where we can actually need this need this idea. But in 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 this case of a normal loop structure, there has to be a condition or there has to be this expression that helps us to keep track of the variable. So let's print this now. So you see, for each loop, for each iteration, the the, the value of variable reduces because here we have introduced uh, this idea. And I just want to add one thing here. Um, in Python or in many C languages, where you have to do variable equals to variable minus one or variable is equals to variable plus one, you can have a shorthand for this, which is um, which is variable minus equal one. And it does the same thing, basically. So you can see. So for while loops, we have to find a way to terminate the condition. There are cases where you want an infinite loop, but these has to be special cases, right? And um, of course, there are so many programs that uses the special cases, but for a, a normal program that where, that you want it to actually end, then this is very important. So if you don't really know uh, which to use, I think for loop will be the best to choose each and every time, each and every time. While loop is useful in some cases, but if you don't know what you're doing, then maybe you should not use a while loop. So that's it with uh, with with while loops. So and I've shown you that you can actually do this. You can do this on uh, uh, on iterables. Also, you can also do this on a in this in the case of while loop, we cannot do while loop on an iterable because um, usually we're keeping track of a, of a variable or something. And so in the case of using an iterable, it will not be exactly in this case. And that's more like an advanced um, case where we have to maybe change the length of the, the iterable or do something to the iterable that makes that, that makes up the condition where we have to stop or where we have to keep going. So here it is. Um, it's just a quick a basic introduction to for loops, uh, while loops, and control structures. Uh, if you like this uh, video, if, if this this has been helpful for you, please. I would need you to uh, like, and if you know someone who who this will be useful for, please share with them. This will help the channel to keep growing. Stay tuned for my next video, where I also talk about more interesting stuff in Python programming. And until then, see you. Have a good day.